Leon seriously doesn't like me cleaning up his shells and his aquarium, his space, but I can't just let them pile up in here. So once in a while, I do come in and take a lot of the shells out. He tries to say, hey man, that's my favorite shell. So I give him a piece of shrimp as a consolation prize. And of course, Big Little Crab is curious about the tongs too. Leon's dexterity has always amazed me. Well, after the first week or two after clipping the rubber bands off his claws. Watch him gently grab this piece of shrimp in this awkward place by the glass. And even when he's eating, he's multitasking, rotating the shrimp, checking on the shrimp shell to be sure it doesn't get away. <laughs> Big Little Crab is about to get mad again. Leon has food, and it seems a little unfair. When Leon eats, everybody eats, though. Big Little Crab knows this. Leon got a little defensive with the last shell I removed. So I check with him to see if this shell is one he wants to keep. He looks it over and says, Nah, man, you can take that one. Strangely, just like Freya, the feral mother cat showed up at the woods house with her three kittens a while back, a beautiful mother hen showed up by the koi pond with her eight tiny chicks. One, two, three, four, eight baby chicks. I know, I shouldn't have counted them. Just like the glass shrimp, now I'll be counting them all the time. I don't know why she showed up here, but I offered them all some bird seed. The mother hen lets me know where the boundaries are. Yeah, of course I made the mistake of counting the chicks earlier, and now I'm noticing there are only six. So, I can hear the other two though. They're over behind the garden wall and can't get back through. There, reunited. Literally though, within two hours, the situation went from what a great mother hen to what in the H just happened. When the sun went down, the mother hen had disappeared and there were six tiny chicks running around the backyard alone and squealing. We looked all over for the hen and the other two chicks but couldn't find them anywhere. It was getting down to freezing here at night, so we knew the baby chicks wouldn't survive the night without their mom. We gathered them up and took them in the house to meet Leon and stay warm for the night. We scrambled to set up a warm nest for them.
The next morning, I went outside, and there the mother hen was, with the other two chicks. I guess what happened was, when it was getting dark last night, she took off to a hiding spot for the night. And unfortunately, six of her tiny chicks were either goofing off or just couldn't keep up with her. So, this morning, I gathered up the six chicks and took them back down to her. They were very happy to see their mom and family. Spring here brings a variety of weather moods, cold, warm, wind, fog, rain, and over and over. There was a big plant sale just down the street, so of course we had to go check it out. I don't need any more fly traps, but and this garden ornament sang to me too, for some reason. Last spring, I stumbled across an amazing school of yellowfin shiners on one of my walkabouts by Chickamauga Creek. So I went back this spring to see if they were there again. I went at the end of February, but nothing. And just a month later, there they were, all shined up in their flashy disco jumpsuits and looking for love. This beautiful coloration is temporary. They only show it off in the spring. We'll all wear some crazy outfits for romance, won't we? In the last episode, Leon charged at his own reflection in the aquarium glass when I put his new giant clams in. That was interesting, and I'm not sure that I've seen him do that before. It reminded me of when you're feeding a dog that's excited to eat or excited to have something new, and its first reflex is to growl and defend it. So it makes me think again he sees the little crabs in here as his competition, 
And it also shows that he feels the stuff I give him is his, all his. Unfortunately, a black cloud flew over the house recently and parked. Jet, the three-legged rescue cat, suddenly went from his normal, joyful, playful self to limp and lethargic. He lay there sad and burning hot. After three days of this, we packed him up and took him to his vet. The vet checked him out, took blood samples, did some other tests, but found nothing obvious. He didn't have a runny nose, he didn't have diarrhea. She sent us home with some meds for his fever and some plastic litter to try and get a urine sample from. When Jet got home, his brother Bunny came up on the sofa to comfort him. If you're a cat keeper, you know every cat has a unique personality. And some are more high strung and even live life with a lot of anxiety. Abby is by far a most high strung and also clingy cat. When I got her from the animal shelter, she had been there in the slammer contained in a small cage for four months. Apparently she was adopted from the animal shelter as a kitten and then returned by her first owners a short time later. Possibly for behavior problems, I don't know. Living here, she's still very skittish, but loyal. As an example, whenever I'm sitting on the sofa watching TV or even gaming, she either sits on me or she has one paw always touching me. So I don't know if her situation is her personality or if it's the result of some sort of abuse before she got here. I would be interested to hear your theories. Here at the house, the black cloud is still hovering. The mother hen and her eight baby chicks were doing great. She was taking all of them now to her hiding place every night, and they were returning here every morning and would spend the day in the yard. Unfortunately, three days later, a neighbor's husky dog was let out of its yard, and it attacked and killed the mother hen and three of the chick, out of nowhere. The mother hen tried her best to divert and escape, but she just couldn't. This might irritate some viewers, but I think some humans aren't as smart as we give them credit for. When we confronted the neighbor, the reason he let his dog out of the pen was because he breeds them, and he still had a young male he wasn't able to sell in there, and the female was coming back into heat. This is the same neighbor that has the unfixed white tomcat running free. This mother hen likely brought her chicks here to Leon's house because she felt a calm and safety here. Unfortunately, the neighbor and his dog drama destroyed that. So, the universe has gifted us five little baby chicks. Jet the three-legged cat is trying to use up all of his nine lives as quick as he can. We had to take him to the vet again. After five days, he was just not getting any better. So obviously we wanted to be sure there wasn't something we were missing. I was fine to wait out a virus as long as we were sure he wasn't on his deathbed with something we were missing. The vets took x-rays this time and they managed to get a urine sample. And there was just nothing obvious. So we were back to, yeah, it's likely a virus he's fighting. After getting his temperature taken in his butt, Jet had to hide under his towel. The vet bills were a bit shocking, and it was frustrating to not have a definite answer on what was going on with Jet. But it was a good feeling to know that Jet wasn't on his deathbed. The vet was at least able to tell us that his blood work looks good, he's not in any critical condition or on his deathbed, so that was reassuring. So, back home we go. Jet tells Leo all about his trip and how he was violated again. Fortunately, among the black cloud and all the drama here, the 125-gallon rescue aquarium is looking amazing. The anemones put on their show all day. New crabs are still appearing, and even an interesting new anemone has shown up. 
The five chicks are all doing great. We've got them in a place set up in the house at night and built a small cage for them to scratch around in and play during the day, supervised. They all take these funny dirt baths. Not a dirt nap, a dirt bath, yeah. They're growing incredibly fast. Have you ever tried putting sheets on a bed with a cat in the room? It's almost impossible to do with Bobby the Karate Cat in the room. Sometimes cleaning the glass in Leon's aquarium is a lot like that too though. He will harass me in every corner of the aquarium. Yeah, I'm definitely guilty of harassing him back. Here I touch my finger to his antennae. He doesn't like it at all. It must be like when your spouse or your friend sticks their finger in your ear. I don't think Leon is used to feeling something warm. While he and I are harassing each other, I'm going to go ahead and clean the avatar patch off his back. I've noticed Leon's avatar patch changing a good bit lately. And I think the reason is he's getting larger and his shell is getting larger. There are a few areas on the very top right that he can't reach, so it's not as perfect an arrow as it was a year ago. After I take the brush and my hands out of his turf, he comes over to the glass like he wants to play more. If you want to wear some Leon and share some Leon love in your world, go to leonthelobster.myshopify.com. leonthelobster.myshopify.com is the only place you can get authentic Leon merch, which helps keep him fed and provides the aquarium supplies he needs, as well as supplies and vet bills for Jet and the other rescue cats, and supplies for the 125-gallon aquarium, and, I guess, the new chicks, too. I'll keep you updated on how Jet's recovering, and on what happens with the new chicks. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and share it with other friends you think might like meeting Leon and following his journey. We'll see you soon.